Hello everyone. Welcome to today's interview as part of this fantastic month-long Inspire Summit. I'm Jill Mackay. I'm a coach, a trainer and a facilitator and I'm now specialising in sobriety, helping professional successful women to change their relationship with alcohol. Now today isn't about my work. I'm delighted to have been invited to join week two of the summit and have a conversation with the amazing Fiaz Sadiq. Welcome Fiaz. So we are I'll always go. I'll give you a gap to say hello. <laughs> Hi, Jill. Hi. Great to Hi, be here. Yes. Great, great to be here talking. Um, so what we're going to be doing is delving into Fiaz's really fascinating career and his two successful technology startups, but most importantly about the lessons that he has learned en route, what he's discovered on his journey that he can share with us so we can all gain insights from that. Um, and you'll have seen the title of the talk as a teaser. It's called the 1% algorithm. Why cathedral thinking is so important in this super broadband age. And wow, I'm really excited to learn more about that. So there are four key areas that we're going to cover in the next hour. We're going to talk about helping people personally. We're going to help talk about um, helping people professionally. We're going to talk about communications and also that really big, but very, very important and empowering word, legacy. So I warmly welcome all of our listeners today, whether you're live now um, or whether you're catching up on replay, I warmly welcome all of you. Please do ask questions in the in the uh, Facebook group. I'm going to keep looking at them and checking that we're to stream and I'll ask some of those in the end if we haven't covered them during the hour. And if you're watching on replay too, then please feel free as well to add in any questions. And I know Fiaz has said that he's really happy to come in and answer those and connect with you as well. So let's get started. And Fiaz, would you like to introduce yourself? I warmly welcome you. Well, great. Thank you, Jill. It's really exciting for this week two of the summit as well. Some really exciting speakers. So a little bit introduction for myself. Uh, yeah, I'm Fia Sadiq, transformational coach, also entrepreneur. And as Jill mentioned, two successful business startups in technology and software. So in the age of the 1990s, when, yeah, broadband was not a word, but it certainly is now, um, and also helped a lot of ways working with the likes of Philips, Microsoft, the global side, and how technology has moved on in this broadband age. And actually realizing, moving back to the 1800th century and seeing why did we build cathedrals? Why did we have communities? And you certainly hear nowadays of entrepreneurs, of business executives, but also people looking for a different way of living, bringing more quality and more value and that's where cathedral thinking was born. And as we go into this interview, I'm sure, Jill, we're going to dig a bit deeper. And the 1%, what does that mean? And there's a personal story there as well about the 1%. But actually, you know, not using external resources, what you've already got, using that 1% to help you improve and just living a much more wholesome and steady and stable life. So over to you, Jill. Oh, that, that's brilliant. So much in there. I mean, God, we've only got an hour. Better get, better get cracking there. <laughs> Absolutely. It's interesting what you say about, you know, when in our, when we started our working lives, it, it was, we weren't in this digital economy and it's, it's so, it provides so many opportunities. I, I remember the other day, a client of mine talking about, oh, I just long to get back to an analog life. So let's just, let's just start there. So my first question really is about fast moving technology. You know, really as human beings, we're not physically made to cope with this digital age. I've got a neuroscience background and our brains aren't designed to really cope with it. So, so how would you suggest, how do we live in this super broadband phase when our bodies are actually screaming for what my client calls analogue? Yeah, uh, I mean, a great, a great way of putting things and why we want to analogue. You know, one of the uh, best universities you know, in Silicon Valley, and we're now talking, uh, you know, 1990, you know, the, you know, the Bill Gates, the Apple, where do they send their children to school? They send them to a college that does not have any technology. Now, I wonder what that says. They still use blackboard and chalk, and this is the most powerful tool, yeah, mm -hmm. is that and a piece of paper, because mm -hmm. that gets your five senses thinking. So, Helping you do that, there's lots of communication around. People are always asking for your time. But are they asking for your time? Are you trying to fulfill something in the digital motorway? Or do you want to come off a little bit 
on the A road and observe and look at and smell and taste. Isn't that what we do on holiday? So the broadband is a great time to when we want to move fast. But if you really want to be creative and really want to be a whole self in a workplace, in a relationship, as a family person, and actually you owe it to yourself as well, then we need to find different tools and we'll talk about the 1% and the cathedral thinking, because together we've got everything to offer. So that's where the analog, getting back to picking up the phone and dialing and hearing that. If I'm going to dial nine, I've got a way. Not just hit and someone's on. That's what we need to get back to. It gives us a chance. And you mentioned neuroscience of all our senses. Start thinking, hey, what's going on here? What's this canvas I'm going to picture? What can I go back to? So we talked about digital ed. What can I go back to my storeroom and pick up in experience? but everything's moving so fast in digital because thousands of contents coming to me, emails, messages, write this. Your brain's just saying, stop. Even motorways have service stations. <laughs> I absolutely love that, Piaz. I'm just looking at some of the comments. Uh, both Marie and Carol Elam are saying that, you know, please let's yet get back to pen and paper. So many people recognise that. I guess there's that power of the pause, isn't there? When, you, when you're actually writing something down, it's, it's more mindful, isn't it? And I, I think your, your language around that digital motorway, it's really useful for all of us to just remember, isn't it? That it's helpful, but let's not forget that we're actually human beings and it's about stopping and noticing. And as you say, engaging all of those senses as yeah, well. And, and touch on that, just a small little personal story is that, you know, I've got two daughters, a 14 year old and an 11 year old. And if all they're getting from me while they're thinking about their career, their lifestyle, and their well-being, and if I, what I'm going to foster is I'm always on the screen or always on the phone. Yeah. yeah. You know, digital age move on. We've got broadband. We're already hearing about Superfi, but what's going to come next? Yeah. You know, Concord, yes. there's a reason we stopped the Concord. So maybe we need to come back. Oh, yes. And wouldn't we appreciate the Concorde differently these days? You know, we, we really would appreciate for what it brought at the time, but also would appreciate perhaps, don't dare I say, the slower pace and, and enjoy the ride in, in, in a different way. Absolutely. It's really interesting, isn't it, about finding that balance and also that what you just added there as well about role modelling to our children and the next generations, because I think a an important role and a duty of care in that regard as well yeah absolutely yeah absolutely and I loved what you said as well about the you know Steve Jobs and the apple and, and the go to school with blackboards and chalk you've really conjured up an image there for me thank you that's great yeah. So let's move on if we may. Thank you so much for that. Let's talk about um I know when you and I had our, our, our pre-chat about this you were talking about resilience you know a, bit, a big word resilience a big topic in itself but what does resilience mean to an organization and its employees? It's, it's, it's a word. It's really interesting. What does resilience mean? Does resilience mean, um, you know, we're talking about neuroscience, we're talking about um, uh, uh, sports science, and we talk about athletes as well. Is resilience always taking yourself to the edge? I like that. Mm. Because if you take yourself to the edge, how stable are you when you're on the edge? Are you managed? Are you controlled? Are you safe? So resilience, I talk about productivity. This whole idea about digital is very much about talking. You know, if you get an inbox, you've got this many reports to do. You've got this seminar to do. You've got this to do. You've got this to do. And all that's doing is taking you closer and closer to the edge. Yeah. Okay. And this is where cathedral thinking comes in a little bit. Because what your cathedral thinking is very much about looking at the whole place and having enough steps to go back to where you feel, I need help. I need yeah. to slow down. I need to be creative. I need to put my management hat on. I need to do this. Whereas in the normal digital world right now, what we're seeing is people being pushed to the edge. And in fact, we're losing them to the cloud. We're losing from desk as remote working, hybrid working. So learning them things about what we're saying about productivity is actually we're losing more productivity because we're pushing people to the edge because all we're doing is actually saying to them, hey, guess what? You're now on an A road. 
You're going to go on the digital motorway. Off you go with nothing prepared, nothing to take a rest. And what we're learning from business uh, leaders now, and you're seeing in the marketplace, well-being directors, well-being, actually harnessing that. And there's a great term at the moment, and, and I'll use it in a bit. It's only about Patagonia and Yvonne Ch Chenard. And what he talks about, letting your people surf. Letting them have the time to be creative, time for family, time to be space. Okay? Because then... Yeah you get more performance and more productivity. And the whole side of cathedral thinking is, when we think about a cathedral, we think about, we don't think about linear. Mm -hmm. We talk about that way. Yes. And when you do that way, linear, you can only go to the edge. But cathedral thinking, that's why the spire and you like that. Because guess what? Each person has a rung to help yeah. each other all the way up. Yeah, love that. And it's safe enough to come down and take yeah. a few and that is where we are and this cathedral thinking and where it is yeah yeah that's that there's so so much in what you said and the language that you use and just digging in a little bit more before i get to the next formal question mm -hmm. i'm really interested about in that language of the edge and you know that whole sort of almost oxymoron of do we do our best thinking the creative thinking when we push ourselves to the edge and yet, as you say, we need to give people the space to come back and pause and reflect and feel a bit more comfortable with their with their their creativity and with innovation. And and I think that is where the balance comes in between the the, the digital and the analog. Absolutely. And and talking about this, there's so much going. On. So the analog side is thinking about what is it that I can do that I can use and be practical about what I can do in the day. So yeah. I've got a lot of reports, I've got a lot of emails. How about thinking about, actually, and then a lot of executives that you know I've coached and that are my clients as well, they have 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at lunch, 15 minutes at midday, and 15 minutes, one hour before they break, to look at their emails. Or their PA sends in different flags. So having a, um, you know, um, a traffic light system for the PA or your management team to create that, so that that's where you are. And then you get back into the other things, productivity. So very much about creating that 1%, them stops. We talked about the edge, but actually creating steps. Yeah, I, I really I really like that. So that's like consciously putting actions in place to help people, you know, operate with minds, edge thinking, but actually retain their, their, their productivity as well. So um, looping, that's, yeah, go on. Yeah, so just, I knew we'd be chatting. Yeah, I know. So just edging a little bit further and a bit deeper is we are now helping managers and, and, and even actually individuals and CEOs to say, when was the last time you actually just picked up the phone to one of your colleagues and just said, hey, how are you doing? So once again, getting off the digital motorway and becoming analog. Yeah, I love it. And, and I, I, yeah, mm -hmm. and one last bit to share this story. We have actually now got CEOs in some very global organizations that have installed a digital phone, but it's still got the old phone where they pick up and dial because it lets them, takes them back to their youth, helps us go back to, hey, let's look around us. So yeah, just sorry, Jill. Just wanted to. Add oh that. no, that's a, that is a, such a brilliant add-in. That really is because while you were talking, I was thinking about the different phones that we had at home in my youth, and that there is it. You know, not just about how technology has evolved. Of course, it has. That's wonderful. But about the physical act of the pause while you wait to be able to go for the next number. That is so good for us, and it gets us really present mm. and in the moment, and therefore present for the conversation. And so just looping back to the sort of that whole topic of resilience in your coaching, then are these the sort of actions that you encourage your clients to take? Absolutely. Because I always talk about them. This is probably psychology. Now I say, yes. if the little you was so above the chair in front of you, so the big adult, and this is very psychology, you know, transitional, what would they say to you? Yeah. What breaks would they take? Yeah. When was the last time? During the day, you picked up a pen and paper. And actually, I encourage this in my coaching. We use colored pens. I said, when was the last time you had colored pencils? Do you remember when you were young that you actually go to an art shop 
and purchase some coloured pencils, the HP yeah. ones. When was the last time you actually doodled? Yeah. I wrote a message to one of your team and actually put it in a post and sent it to them to say thank you. Yeah. So then coaches, and then we talk about, so what is your day taken up? Is your day taken up for fire fasting? Okay. And firefighting, the more air you give it, the more it's going to blaze. Fires need space yeah. to spread and then they thin out. So maybe that's what we're talking about that. Don't push yourself to the point. What are you helping? And we talk about this. When you're working, it should be 80%, not 100% in. Love that. Yeah, we'll get to the percentages in a minute, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because the whole, yeah. look at the German economy. So working with a couple of large manufacturers, they're very much a, a, about the 70%. 70% is brilliant. The 30% is being creative, walking, thinking, talking, communicating all your five senses. Because when they're all fired up, guess what? You're ready for the motorway. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the, the language that you use is resonating so strongly with me. And it, when you said firefighter as well, really interesting about the, 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 the time and the space. I remember a number of years ago, somebody said to me, they were talking about cultures and organisations. And they said to me, um, why is it that we tend to reward the firefighters you know, in an organisation, those that, that are really good in a crisis? Mm. Whereas actually, what about the people who are in the stability who are who have the resilience who are able to to help us avoid the fires in the first place so we can actually go to the edge you know and that resilience is about coming back and avoiding the fires as well isn't it so very 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 interesting i've got some lovely um comments that are coming up uh, i think everybody's in rampant agreement with you uh, here mm -hmm. which is really, really fantastic um marie's saying uh, such a great analogy analogy about the cathedral we'll talk more about that marie in a week in a wee bit um carol elam has actually said what junction do i get off at i'm assuming she's talking about the digital motorway there might have a coaching client coming up there but she has yeah and marie's also adding in that i love that when all your senses are fired up you're ready off the motorway it's genius so really it's great your language and and your the, the pictures that you're creating are really really landing well with everyone that's fantastic well, thanks to my clients and people like you so thank you brilliant brilliant well, I, it's, it's that's so true isn't it we learn so much from our clients don't we we mm. ourselves that learn every day we learn from them on their own journey absolutely absolutely yeah, indeed so i think we might have covered a little bit of this because I, I knew it would be more of a sort of toing and fro but that's fine but let's just put it into a question so that perhaps if people are dipping in and out we'll be able to summarize for them so this next question was really around how do we take the goodness of the digital world into the goodness of the analog world, rather like your dial on the on the, 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 the digital telephone? So, so what can we take from all the goodness of what's happening now in 2022 and the wonderful opportunities we have now? Um, what can we take from that that is allowing us to create value for bringing us back into that analog world? Yeah, great, great question. And I'm going to have a second to pause because I want to reframe this because um, I've had to think about this. Good. If we take the old phone and the dials, okay? And if we look at the digital world, how fast it's moving, we've grown. I'm going to take it back to the next generation because what they're actually doing is the next generation, and we're working with some young CEOs and young managers and young product managers, they're actually very boundaried. So they would rather work three days. So back to Carol, what she put on the comment, what junction do I get on? I think the young generation is trying to find boundaries for them junctions now. Yeah. Okay. And to go a little bit further on that analogy is the digital world is brilliant because, hey, we're in different cities now. I don't, you know, environmentally, it's fantastic. You know, when I get off this, I can spend time with my family. So can you, you can go outdoors. But we seem to be giving a permission for the digital to take over. And actually what she'll be saying is, it should be a relationship. Yeah. And the relationship is about, hey, you can give me all the bells and whistles and I can, you know, like you say in the digital world, I can reach to any city in any world with a click or a Zoom. But actually what is that doing? Where's the quality of me actually staying still? So some of the things we talk about cathedral thinking is 
what are the different people around me, my team, my family, my professional people, and what activities am I helping myself to come off at them junctions and them service stations and go and take a day to a spa, go and take, actually this time, I really want to be productivity or project management, or I want to develop something that I take that dial and notch it up to eight. But my finger's always there because I know I can go back to three. So those, the 1% will come into this, but cathedral thinking, when we originally t- talked about that, it was about resilience because, you know, you had, in them days, you had the, the village, you know, you had the builders, you had the butcher, you had the shopkeepers, but they always started coming together, humanizing the experience, talking. We're not doing that. Yeah. We're allowing the algorithms and everybody, as you know, you know, Twitter, everybody's got an opinion. And nobody's allowed to have an everybody's allowed to have an opinion, but actually you yourself lose your opinion because you're lost into the digital side. And if you was the analog, back to cathedral thinking, we're meeting at the cathedral, we're thinking of a project. Let's say we're gonna extend the wall or we're gonna grow some trees. We don't just go and do that. We actually talk with everybody and using our senses. And that was, and actually we're learning from each other. So even though a farmer, someone, a butcher, yeah, they've got them skills. And what we're trying to say and getting back from the digital to their monologue is we've all got certain skills, team building, okay, leadership, productivity. They're all the tools, but we've, we've somehow camouflaged them with a screen like Zoom of digital. But actually what we need to do is sit around the table or even communicate and connect with people in all them five senses. And that is cathedral. Oh, gosh, I love this. I Done. can't tell you how much I, I, I the, the language you're using is just so powerful. And just, you know, I hope people take the time to watch this hour because the, the gold dust that is, is, is contained within this will help us all with that. Our own boundaries, I guess, and our own thinking, what we want to apply to, to ourselves. It's really interesting that you mentioned up front around younger people and who are coming into the the working world which they've known nothing else but the digital world these are our future ceos aren't they these are the, the, the innovators the leaders of the future people who will harness that enthusiasm and harness hopefully a new analog culture to a degree in the future as well but that what you say about boundaries is really interesting and i've got a comment here from uh, marie here who's saying music to my ears um boundaries good for the young ceo ceos being boundaries so they, they're really clear around their their work and their life but more than just the work that, and their life it's what's happening within their their work as well how they and, operate in the day-to-day and, ways how they show up and, and i'll add to and an, a story of intel so i was very much involved in that i'm going to talk a little bit about cathedral thinking so here's a go- global corporation and this project happened in 2002 2003 and you know uh, so co-founder of a, a certain company that does solar and you know powering and intel came to then when you know data centers were being built in arizona and so forth and they said you know what? we've just seen to we've got this great technology once again coming back to what you said jill it's digital it's fantastic it's a tool it can do so much and it does improves medical health living well-being all that but we've got to take it for what it is so coming back to the intel story is they realize all the processes they made have got a bad name because what we're using is using all this power, polluting the air. So they said, what could we do? And um, we came up with an idea. What if we could power rural villages? Yeah. Wow, now, now yeah. there's the legacy. Yeah. So working it's with absolutely. Intel, we, we created, um, we created um, shipping cabins. And what was happening was we, we did the research first uh, and by the way, I was a product manager here, so in innovation, that's why I got involved quite deeply, is that first of all, we found that actually a lot of village children were traveling miles and miles in the baking sun. And as we know, education helps everyone, helps farming, it helps production, it helps feeding the family, it helps your well-being. But these children are walking, and when they were walking for miles, actually sometimes, because in these villages, the health wasn't great, the water wasn't clean, you know, sanitary wasn't great, when they'd walked a few miles in the blazing sun, the teacher was ill. So then they had to walk back. So we said, 
wouldn't it be great if we could create a school that was connected using digital? So we created lots of cabins across rural villages. They were connected each mile by a mass and we delivered the Intel education program to these cabins. And here's the great news. Because of great connectivity, if that child went to that cabin in that village and didn't have to walk miles, he had more energy to get food and farm later on, be with their family and their parents were really happy because you've got to work on the farm. And they were learning new methods. But the most important thing is it was sustainable because wherever they went, there was a teacher three miles away that could connect. And it doesn't matter if this teacher was ill. So that's cathedral thinking on a different level. And I wanted to bring that story. Big corporations are trying and doing, um, and the positive intelligence is coming as well in all that, using all your seven levels of intelligence, creativity, productivity. Yeah, so I will stop there, but I could, there's a whole two. <laughs> it's all right, I've got all afternoon. Fantastic. So, so I'm saying Intel, and you know, coming back to the story of Patagonia, one of the powerful things I mentioned you know, he is very much about, and, and a lot of, you know, Microsoft and Cisco, they're, they're implementing this. In terms of, rather than pushing employees away with productivity, it's giving them space to come back. And as I mentioned about cathedral thinking, everybody can do a certain skill, but we've all got natural skills, natural habitats. And if we can live in a natural habitat and not in a digital habitat, he's created one of the biggest Patagonia, you know, Yvonne Chouinard, one of the most ethical companies, because what he believes, and I believe we're now coming to a generation where if we, rather than buy an experience, if we can learn an experience and use it within our community and the natural resources we've got, then we've got sustainability, we've got cathedral thinking, we've got space, we've got cathedral because we can all help each other grow up. And more importantly, Legacy is very much about this is where Patagonian, you know, Microsoft come in is what are we, and I mentioned my, my, my two daughters, but certainly everybody's got children or grandchildren. What are we showing them? Yeah. So the legacy yeah. should be hey, let's create spaces, let's create a yeah. natural habitat, but use technology advances to, ri- to live a much richer, fulfilled life. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And there's so much that's springing to mind around that. And it's around, you know, the the digital world is it's almost the context, the side show rather than the main show. The main show on the stage of human is human existence and the digital economy is enabling us to do so. so Let's not let it run our lives. Yeah. And yeah. And, you know, it it comes about this, you know, about a choice, you know, am I just a passenger in this? Yes. Am I really engaged here? You know, do I need to help others or do I need to help myself? Or what is a safe place to go? So a little bit of framework here, some of the CEOs and individuals I work with is creating that space and saying, is it personally helping me? Is it professionally helping me? Is it helping the community? And is it creating legacy? Yeah, yeah. I see that. It's really interesting how you can, that those are almost like four really grounded questions that we can ask ourselves and, and help us to create good decisions for ourselves and the wider the wider world as well. Another thing that struck me when you were talking there, Fiaz, is um, around people connecting to meaningful work. You know, so rather than joining an Intel or a Cisco for the, I mean, mean, genuinely incredible, you know, perhaps engineering experience and skills building or whatever that they can give them, to be able to be connected to the building the metaphorical cathedral, the cathedral thinking of rural villages and and, helping increase quality of life in a really meaningful way, that's different from joining a company because it can give you a career in the traditional sense of the world. And that then helps everybody understand the ladder that you're you're um, demonstrating there as well. Really powerful. I've got a comment from um, a lady called uh, Patience. Thank you for joining uh, Patience. So Patience is saying, what sustainability and contributions is about flowing away from productivity and performance goals focus to a focus on organic growth and development. So uh, lovely, really lovely comments and observation there. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, we, we talk about um, different types of training your mind. So we're now going to go a little bit cathedral thinking. So this is a little bit of coaching, but just, you know, very coming over the edges. Um, 
a lot of research has been done for 35 years and we always thought and this is from neuroscience and Jill you, mm. you you probably know this report is that we always thought it was the brain that helped everything control everything actually it's the mind that's the activator the brain creates a skeleton and the frameworks of past experiences it doesn't have any new experiences but the mind if you don't give it space and be, help it become analog and use the five senses, which evolution over millions of years we've got as a gift. So let the light shine through that cathedral and just, yeah, it's our job, just, just touching the surface there. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I love it. I, I love it. I think we were on such the same page here around this. Uh, absolutely. It's, um, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating. And we could go on, we could go on so many different tangents. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, try, I'm trying to keep us on track and we're, we're yeah. more than halfway through already. Right. Absolutely. Can I just revisit one thing? And it's not just because it's on my list. I, do, I just want to really understand a little bit more. Now, you've talked about Patagonia and the Patagonia example a little bit. Can you give me a bit more about that? About that yeah, case? of course. Thank of you. course. No, thank you. So the, the, the Patagonia scenario is a lot of companies out there were always going for capitalism, production pushing, pushing, pushing. And as we know in this climate, certainly, you know, we hear about the heat wave and there's certainly one now. The, and what, what the Patagonia story is very much about, what are my core values? And what can I do as a human being to help the surroundings about me? But more importantly, the people. So Yvonne, um, you know, Shinard was very much about the people that came and worked with him, they don't have any schedules. They come and go as they wish but they all know what their responsibility is, okay? So whether they that, do that in a day or three days, there's always very much a project driven, but actually mm -hmm. people are being more creative and no idea is wrong. So that's how we built the company. And then I talk about, let my people surf, let my people meditate, let my people come in sandals, let my people, if a child's sick at home, go and, you know, go see to that child. So the capitalism is very much about let's grow, grow, grow. But what we're doing is it's going to take a long time for the earth to replenish itself and do that. So on an ethical way is actually how could I physically help my team, my people and business grow? So hopefully that helps answer that. Uh Oh no, abs absolutely. I, 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 it's another CEO with an unmentionable, or not unmentionable, unpronounceable name there. But I think it's, I think it's such a, a beautiful example about this. You know, the no schedule, just knowing what your remit is, and and stepping into your integrity to deliver and drive uh, what what is required without the the sort of, you know, the rules, if you like, that organizational yeah. life can constrain. Yeah, and I think. Once again, rules, you know, when we're now talking about psychology and different level, you know yourself as well. If you create a rule that's, you know, obviously big companies are big rules that you actually can't get anything done. And all you're doing is killing creativity. That's why there's lots of burnout. So the cathedral thing is, as I say, it's not a linear approach, it's that approach. But if you can have a product manager, creativity or your team and management, and they've got space to think and be creative and take risk so having a culture that's it's okay to take a risk yeah because that's yeah. where we get innovation and this now and i'm going to move away from patagonia and talk about phillips so phillips Hi. you know so phillips you know in 2010 11 when i was over in eindhoven they're top engineers innovators they've gone through a whole period of creating discs and lots of devices home-based devices and they were in this linear so we did an exercise about cathedral thinking and said, ask the engineers and the, you know, the real leaders, when was the last time you actually walked on the street uh, from nine to five in the morning? And they went, not much. I said, why? So we did a little exercise. We walked around the town. We came back in the room. We said, right, what did you like? If we were to take you back, what is it? Do you know what? I like gardening. I like painting. I like this. I said, I've never been able to do that. Why is that then? Because I've got so much productivity, I need to get out, I don't get time. What would really help if I could just go out and do that? So we created a, a scenario where once a week, they could just go out and help in the community, grow flowers, go to an art class. Do you know that's what was born for Phillips? The whole medical side then. Their top end is how can we help people? Whereas before we were servicing people, now Phillips are leading the, leading the way in medical devices, and how to help it. So that's another way of big organizations are changing 
away from linear but to cathedral thinking that's that is really powerful, really powerful. And I think it's also really heartening to hear these case studies of companies who are not just talking the talk, but whilst they might not know the language of cathedral thinking, you know, but that whole philosophy or that, that whole ethos about it, you kind of find people, organisations putting initiatives or tick box, what really are tick boxes exercising play? What is an initiative? An initiative almost implies there's going to be an end point, whereas this is not, this is a, a way of thinking, let's put things into place whereby people can behave and have autonomy and different choice within, within that. And, and like you say, going for a walk, connecting with the local community, difference, and look what it heralded. Look what it heralded Absolutely. In, in that case study. I mean, thank you so much for sharing that. You've you've really brought it alive. I think like you know, giving those those sort of um, organisational examples with you know well known names that we can all relate to. So another question, slight detour, if we may, on this digital motorway. We're on a digital. Let's say we're on a B road today because we're having a nice conversation there mm. today. Um, we talked a little bit about the one percent. Um, algorithm effect and I know it's all related it's not mutually exclu exclusive but fuck it a bit what does it actually mean the one percent algorithm effect so some of the greatest and I'll talk about Facebook and then I'll come to that because I'm going to tell the story about Facebook Facebook had an algorithm and one of the biggest problems they had and if you've seen the film is to line up along the algorithm to help all the social media connect and they couldn't get it wrong. They couldn't get it right. Yeah, okay. And what it took was 1%. Okay. And why that took was, took space away to create that 1%. So this is where this originated from. What if I got a huge complicated problem, I've got a vision, I want to be a better father, I want to be a better leader. What if I walked into that room and said, I'm going to do 1%, I'm going to be present. What if as a leader you said, I'm going to acknowledge someone who's done fantastic. What if even, it doesn't matter what politician you are, and I don't want to get into that. What if a politician actually just said, do you know what? I want to listen to the community. So the 1%, and I'm going to change this a little bit to myself, you know, I'll talk about my younger daughter, uh, you know, who's, you know, who's done really, she, she was done really well in diving, but she had a block six months ago. So we've tried this. Diving, one. did you say? Yeah, yeah, diving. Oh, sorry, didn't catch uh, yeah, 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 diving. So, you know, she's in one of the, you know, squads, um, diving, national actually. Um, and one of the things she was struggling with, she was always coming fourth or fifth. And we just had a conversation that says, when you get on the edge of that board, all this pressure's on you doing all this training, all this, what's going through your mind? And she said, da, 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 da. And I said, what would it be like if you didn't think about that and you thought about how you feel when you're on that board? She said, I'm really grateful. I can inspire other people. I've gone through some things. I said, so when you're on that board, what about thinking about them three things, just 1%? So in the last two months, she got gold, silver. So I'm, I'm, that's that 1%. So yeah. we work with a number of CEOs. His relationship, so with the 360, uh, so we talked to the leadership to say, so how's the CEO performing, blah, blah, blah. Very open. Nobody's going to know about this report. And, um, you know, and then we work with the CEO and says, so what do you think the people are saying if we picked five things? Uh, this, this, and this. It was nothing on his mind. And what he did was he improved on one thing, communication. Yes. One percent. And all his team board level are engaged. They're getting great ideas. He feels fulfilled. He's not going home thinking, "What? Why, why did I get into that? I've lost the love." Yeah. So the one percent is whatever you do. Like I'm sat here today. What other one percent can I help? Yes. And if you do, and what we do with our clients, and you know, certainly talking with large groups, if you had three things a day, you know. Yeah. Maybe sit and smell the coffee and sit with your wife or partner. Maybe when your kids are going out of the house saying, stop, I didn't give you a hug. Maybe the team that you're working with, the person who's always quiet, really listening, the non-verbal what's going on, 1%. And at the end of the day, when you add them, that's 3%. I'm up to 7, 8, 9%. If you add that up to the week, 
it makes you connected with the analog side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it, even let's get the maths out of the way. You know, it's just it, it's just it's about I guess it's about the ripple effect, isn't it, as well? The, yeah. The, I mean, what you that story you, you told about your daughter there and fantastic. Well done to her. Well done to you, Dad. You know, really good. But, you know, it, it's. It's giving me goosebumps because it's it's a different way of having a conversation and really connecting to what matters. Yeah, and um, where we're talking now, so if you're in a team or if you're an entrepreneur by yourself, there's things you do really well. And that's fantastic. There's things that kind of hold you back or you think you should do on your to-do list. What if you just put 1% next to it, actually write it down, OK, what's the one percent action or thought you need to do and write that down in the yeah. beginning of the day and at the end of the day? And, you know, that could be like I really need to do my, uh, let's say, uh, numbers and you know finances. But what if you actually just open that Excel sheet? Do you know what? If you yeah. just did that one action. Yeah. You ticked your one percent. It's the feel yeah. good factor It's the positive yeah. intelligence, because once you tick that, we're back to pen and paper because I so one I won't say advice, but a thought is anything you do on one percent is pen and pad. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's used I, 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 <laughs> it, it, it uses a different you know, it uses a different part of our brains, doesn't it? As well, and right. it, for me, the writing and the scribbling and the doodling is about the pause as well. Mm. You access different, you know, you're pausing, it takes a little bit longer and you're accessing different thoughts, I think, well, rather than the, the the keyboard warriors that we're all kind of becoming these days. And one of my clients, I won't mind sharing this because I think she's gone through, so I've, I've been coaching a client and I want to share this 1% cathedral because I've been the coaching the client, for, you know, she, she, she's, a, she's a CEO. You know, two years ago, she, you know, she had tragedy and we tried to work through that and build around that. And just last week, she was in the Netherlands and she's just sold 24% of her business to a big software company, which it was all about 1%. Yeah. Right. And she, she really struggled saying, when I went in that room to the investors, I didn't know what to say, but she just had 1%, three things. And I want to talk a little about Chris Hoy, Olympian. You know, he won the Olympics the first time, the goal, absolutely brilliant. The second Olympics, you know, he sat on his bike, but the person next to him has just broken his world record. And he absolutely, his mind went. So this is a psychologist who worked with him, a sports psychologist, and helped him concentrate on 1%. And all he said is, Chris, what are you good at? Well, I'm good at biking. What, what makes you feel good when I get on that saddle? Right, and what else? I've got music or I'm focused, right. So when he, the next time he went to the Olympics, he got on the bike, felt the saddle, that's 1%. He got hold of the things, he felt good. And then he just closed his eyes and then he won gold again. The yeah. 1% ripple effect. Amazing. Abs absolutely amazing. And, you know, I mean, those, those cyclists have certainly just smashed everything and Chris Hoy is a you know the the, the amazing facilitator of that as well as a great a great winner and that's, that's just lovely and re really you're really resonating with me and I know that the listeners will will certainly take so much for this and I've already got in my mind there's a market for having some doodle pads with one percent written on the top <laughs> absolutely get printed for you know, you know. it's my gift to everyone <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely so i've got some comments here um and i will actually i'll use one of them as a segue perhaps into the next the next section marie's saying um marie fraser this current world needs creativity and creative thinkers like it's never needed them before and let me just hang on somebody else has put something up so just give me a second um and the outdated educated system we have we have who poos creativity they put academia too much i think you talked to that before it's so so um true isn't it um caroline lamb has added when you focus on your strengths and those that energize you things can happen carol b is uh, already um off to market the doodle pads with the one percent on them carol boskert that's great and then the word legacy both patients and um carol uh, boskert are saying they love that word um, legacy and in fact patience is saying it's one of my favorite words and carol's saying i love that i love it too so perhaps we can use that as a as a link a, a, a sort of movement into a question about legacy talk to me about god what a big question cathedral thinking one percent and legacy well 
if you think about um, where we are in this world at the moment, and if all we're doing is letting productivity run our lives, and letting productivity run our creativity, actually, are, are we creating the best things? Are we creating the best self of ourselves for our partners, for our children, for our grandchildren, for our community? So if you think of that, and the real, we've now got the tools in terms of improving. And the cathedral thinking is, and there was a study done, and I think, you know, I look into studies a lot, by someone in Portsmouth, um, and this was 10 years ago, about community and sustainability and actually helping around that and connecting with people. And COVID has shown that. So I've got another friend, a CEO I coach up in Sheffield, actually, who, and I'll talk about real community legacy here, is... He quit a job as an IT consultant to set up food banks and not food banks to work with um, what they call uh, with supermarkets. OK. And when they were throwing food into the landfill, OK, this was all being sold. This is all being thrown away. And the reason they didn't want to give food to anybody else to distribute it because of uh, legal side, if anybody got ill, blah, blah, blah. So we worked creatively. So what? Could that look like? Could we work with a lawyer and just say, we will take all ownership? We will. And the problem they had is they couldn't deliver it to you. You had to go and pick it up. So we hide it. We hide that. And now over COVID, over the local community, and he had 400 um, workers that helped him, okay, volunteers, middle of COVID, delivered over 300,000 meals of food that was being thrown away. There's cathedral thinking. There's legacy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it comes from 1% of thinking differently in the first place. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll go a little bit further, actually, about um, legacy and cathedral. I'll go back to, you know, Yvonne Chouinard from Patagonia. When he was at school, you know, with maths, he wasn't really interested in maths. He was counting the tiles. Okay. When he was in English, he wasn't really interested. He was looking at the lines around that. How can I create, um, you know, mountain gear equipment and so forth? He talks about a, 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 a general manager um, who came in, and one of the things was she used to go to school and she wanted to go to university, but she was very much a, a beach girl and she used to just go to school without any shoes on. And she even was proactive in thinking that, if I need to go to university, they've asked me to wear shoes. So she actually designed, check this out, she designed some laces, just attached them to her feet so she could go to university. But she now was, for 13 years, was the general manager of Patagonia. So this legacy and cathedral thinking, you know, the innovators, Richard Branson, there's so many out there, okay? And I think what happens is we jump on this digital age and we think it's got the answers. I think what it's got us, it helps us search and find destinations. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's an important difference, isn't it? Yes. And, you know, yeah. enjoy it, you know, um, you know, what we're doing with the younger generation, you know, there's so much social media, Twitter, but, you know, so I've got younger daughters now, but actually it was really interesting saying to them, you know, whereas, you know, whereas before in a team as well, you say, you know, Facebook, you're so glued to a screen that you're thinking in the moment how everybody else's life is brilliant. Yeah. But does anybody really post anything on there about real? In fact, does a CEO, I mean, I know one or two CEOs that do, actually what it's like being a CEO. Yeah, you might see the fancy cars and the holiday, but you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So... The digital world is fantastic because it shows all the shiny thing. I believe the digital world has got lots of tools, but it's a showroom for everything. Yeah. Let's get back to the garage, the storeroom, the people that help create that. Let's let's get back to them senses, the creativity. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scribbling this down so I can remember it because it's it's just I think this is so powerful. You know, from the showroom to the garage. You know that creative thinking 
Yes, some of it might happen in the showroom, but let's be really honest. It happens in the garage. It happens when we're out running at night. It happens when we're in the middle of a conversation. It happens in real life, day to day life in the moment. And it also happens from hard work, not necessarily that curated digital lifestyle that we tend to all see all of the time. And I think that's so important. So mm. important. This is and all about humanizing ourselves as well. Yeah. I think permission. Yeah. Permission not to be OK. Yeah. to be okay yeah yeah That's i, I agree with that <laughs> yeah it's interesting isn't it you know it's you know i'm not necessarily advocating that everybody shows up on social media every day telling everybody about all their problems in life it's not about that either but you know what yeah life is messy there are ups and downs we it's about how do we navigate the ups and downs of life in my in my world that's about working with women to navigate it without soothing through alcohol but also people soothe through digital and like you say they expect to get answers from digital no digital is a, is wonderful and it's an enabler and it uh, may uh, give us avenues but your language of well, you, searching and finding a destination you, is just you, you've done it brilliant there jill you've just said something we could say the digital motivator digital is the activator Ooh, and love the that. brain is the doer and the cathedral thinking there it is it's and because you've given that space jill that we've just yeah. created something there for one percent yeah and we've done it live there you go <laughs> and, we, and it was not rehearsed and it came up but it, quite seriously this is often how you know ideas come out through conversation but do we give ourselves permission in the moment to actually enjoy the natural conversations that we have with people every day where we could discover our one percent and and it's interesting we've done it in this interview when i said i just need a second and a moment to think that's giving permission for us to yeah. pause because sometimes when we're in the digital world um, i wanted to become analog i was thinking which brain is talking now yeah. and i need to yeah. get back to the creative side yeah and that's helping you know teaching clients or helping people you know when you're in the moment and really pressurized and stressed, it's no yeah. point going to the edge. Yeah, absolutely. You know, find that 1%, even looking at a little bit of sunlight or a floorboard that's got a new crack, that's beautiful in itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And completely coincidentally, this morning I posted about a book that I love that is called The Unexpected Joy of the Ordinary. Oh, Facts and wow. pavements, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Smelling a flower, engaging those five senses that you talked about earlier. Comment from, uh, well, actually two comments from a lady called Carol Elam. Um, and she's a career coach, I know that. And she has said, um, when you focus on your strengths and those things that energize you, then things can happen. So it's about giving yourself permission, isn't it, as well, to focus it on is, your strengths? It is permission, absolutely. And shifting. We talk about mind shift. I don't think it's that. I think it's permission to give all your senses because when all five are thinking they're all powered that is yes. your true self yeah it, yeah and it feels good doesn't it <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely and i think we, we we do lose that but it's almost just like reconditioning yourself slowly back to actually i am a fun person i, I love creative sometimes i make mistakes i'm a bit dipsy so what that's what got you here brilliant yeah <laughs> Exactly. And we forget that. We forget. Don't we forget the fact that all that stuff, that good stuff that we forget is good. It got us here now for this opportunity of the next one percent. You know, I think we just spent we could just do with spending a moment recognizing what we've done so far, you know, and, and taking the positives from that as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got a couple more things. Oh, Kat, yeah. uh, Marie has made a comment that um, a lot of the time, talking about the showroom, a lot of the time it's not a showroom for reality. Very true. And Carol's added in, uh, stop rushing around, stop and smell the roses. That's the same Carol that asked what function it was to, to get off the motorway on as well. So, <laughs> absolutely. Couple more questions for you before we end. Let me just quickly check the time. Yeah, we've got a little bit of time left. One of them, I remember when we were talking, when we first met each other, you talked about the wonderful um, habitat um, of the gazelle and the use of the animal kingdom, the gorilla and the gazelle. And I think my question is around, um, how important is it for organizations to create space and how can they do that? If we can bring some animals in, let's try and yeah, do that. Yeah, brilliant. And I think it's a great one. Yeah, we talked about, you know, the big gorilla of a business and it's so huge, it can't move. 
But with this cathedral thinking and this agile, the gazelle, if you had smaller teams that, you know, we, we, we talk in speed where we are scrum masters and I don't want to get technical, but you have great five, 10 minutes where you think, right, this is the problem. How do we all try to solve this as a team? That's been a gazelle, but still the big gorilla is kind of moving and they're great because they've got policies and, you know, bigger project. And the gazelle has all its senses, all five senses, because it can sniff in the air where which way the wind blows, where the danger is. Yeah. But a big gorilla, big organization, and they're great because we've shown examples of organizations doing great and being agile and being, you know, gazelles. But creating that in a team environment, in a leadership, in a culture. So hopefully that. <laughs> Yeah, be more gazelle. Be more. I would definitely. Yeah, say. We'll create a hashtag for that. You know, how modern. Be more gazelle. Be more gazelle. And I, but I think you know, using the metaphor and, and you, you're very metaphorical in your storytelling, which is lovely. I think it helps people to connect in different ways. And you know, I think that whole what you just described there as the gazelle, gorillas in a gazelle habitat. And we can all learn from the animal kingdom. And if you picture now three circles, the past is courage. Mm -hmm. The future is yet to be written, but the now is the 1%. I love that. The now is the 1%. Brilliant. So I'm going to rem remember that and perhaps close with that in five minutes. We've just got we've just got a few minutes left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, check, check, checking in. Um, there's um, Carol Boscoe has written hashtag be more gazelle. I think it's going to become a thing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> so my, my last question, I mean, we could go on forever. My last we question coming to a close. Um, it, it's just to kind of almost drill it down to to some a couple of just memorable moments. What, what would be your your top tips for people to be able to really bring one percent that thinking into their lives and then also to be able to expand into a cathedral thinking mindset two big questions there actually <laughs> if we could just distill it down for a, a, yeah, a close I, right. so I, I i would say on the one percent okay when you try to take big steps you know there's a one analogy you know if we draw two ladders one ladder has got lots of rungs yeah and the other ladder next to it has got a couple of rungs missing each time. Okay. Which one on a day when you're very stressed as a personally or professionally, are you more likely to take the 1% and climb? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, looking, look, don't... Uh, so looking at, it's really hard to take big steps. People think in their day to day life, they haven't got the time or the space. But if you took a moment, and you came across a problem or you're feeling great and say, 1%, how can I celebrate this? Because it's important to celebrate your wins. Or 1%, how can I get my creative side? Problem thinking. You need to get off the digital motorway. You need to create space. And in that 1% writing down, what does that need to do? Actually, do you know what? When I'm really stressed, I need to go and pick a phone up and go call one of my friends. Oh, do you know what? When I were working from home, my partner, my wife, my children, my pet is at home. For that 1%, I'm just going to go give them a stroke and a cuddle. And that, yeah. that, is, that is your senses because we need the humanizing. Yeah. And if you're in a team, okay, and you're looking at all around you trying to solve a problem, what if you said to the team, each one of them, pen and pad, we're not talking smartphones, nobody's taking any notes, okay? I'm each one of you, I'm going to give a different color. And I want to write you 1% on here, how we could move this project forward or bin it or come with a real um, idea. And I guarantee you, you suddenly in them 10 minutes have created, however your big your team is, a 10% improvement, a 20% improvement in that 10 minutes. And that engages your positivity because you're not thinking of a box, you're now thinking of light through the cathedral. Yeah. Well, 
that sounds like a beautiful moment to to stop there and how on earth can I summarize the last hour apart from with a big thank you it's been superb I think uh, one of the comments have been from Marie has just said oh my goodness I, I absolutely adore the three circles you're, you're getting a lot of love out there which is fantastic and it's it's really I think you know you're connecting so well with what many people are, are, are feeling and sensing but you know want to be able to have an idea of how to put into practice for themselves I think what you said a few moments ago about the three circles and the past is courage the future is yet to be written now is the one percent that's a really great way to finish thank you so much for your time Fiaz. well it's thank you for everybody awesome. listening thank you jill great it was uh, and i hope it helps people um and that's what this is about where you know the cathedral and the communities if it helps anybody share it uh, absolutely <laughs> absolutely so Thanks to you. Big thanks to everybody who came on live. Yeah, thank and you. thank you to everybody who is going to come and join. As I mentioned at the beginning, please do also ask your questions in the Facebook group initially. Yeah. And, and Fiaz will come in and connect with you and answer those questions. And also, please, can I encourage you as well to come and watch the other amazing presentations within this month of August within the Inspire Summit. So thank you, everyone. And a big thank you to you. Thank Fiaz. you, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye okay. now. Bye. Bye.